So let's talk about another way to make ethers, and this is the this is the Williamson ether synthesis. Now, the thing about the William ethers Williamson ether synthesis is that it's actually pretty good about not really giving us this limitation with the reversibility that we see with something like acid catalyzed. It's also going to give us a lot more control in terms of what we're going to make. But there's a few points, and we're going to make them as we move along, that kind of complicate the synthesis and limit what it can be used for. So this is going to proceed through two steps and use two different reagents. The first reagent here is going to be the alcohol. So our alcohol, in this case we're going to use ethanol, we're going to deprotonate using a strong base. to give us the alkoxide. And I feel free to comment on this. I'm 90% paranoid that this is where the substitute class naming come, comes from, is this idea of the Williamson ether synthesis. But we've got our alkoxide, and the alcohol here needs to be a primary alcohol, and there's gonna be a good reason for this. This alkoxide here is gonna get reacted with an alkyl halide. So in this case, let's use chloroethane, one chloroethane. And we're going to get a nucleophilic attack, and we're going to displace the chlorine to give us the diethyl ether and the chloride. Now, all of the bat, you're probably already hopefully seeing a lot of potential pitfalls with this reaction. The reason why we need to work with a primary alcohol is that we want to reduce the chances that we're going to get elimination. So if we have something like a secondary or tertiary alcohol, particularly something with a neighboring hydrogen, there's a good chance we're going to pluck off that hydrogen with a base. And that's going to give us an alkene, which is not what we want. The other issue you might see here is that when we start attacking this chloride, there's also a chance of elimination here as well. So our alkoxide might also be a good enough base that it ends up deprotonating and dehydrohalogenating to give us an alkene as well. So the way we're going to stop this is again we're going to focus primarily on primary alcohols and with our alkyl halides we want to focus on ones where there isn't a neighboring hydrogen that will allow us to do elimination if this is possible. Ultimately though if we're working with things where there's potentials of elimination for both the alcohol and the alkyl halides we're going to end up with a mixture. So this tends to be the issue of the Williamson, synthesis, Williamson ether synthesis is we do end up producing a mixture of products if we're not careful and because it's a mixture if we want to isolate our product we're going to have to follow this up with a subsequent separation step.